Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 971. <laughs> I had a five in my head for some reason. Um, today I'm actually doing a follow-up from this weekend, and so I'm calling it the aftermath. How do we move on? The aftermath, not the aftermath. Um, aftermath, English. Um, how do we move on? Because the thing is, since the weekend, and I'm talking about the loss of a native son, so to speak, um, a lot of people are going through their own process. I was actually at Trader Joe's earlier today. It's what inspired this, this thought. And watch people walking through the stores. And some of them were happy, some were sad. There was quite a lot of yellow and, and uh, what's the yellow and claret? No, yellow, yellow and purple jerseys in the Trader Joe's um, in honor and tribute and celebration of you know, Kobe Bryant. And I did watch this morning, I had to catch up on um, Jimmy Kimmel's, on YouTube, on Jimmy Kimmel's show from last night, which was a tribute to Kobe Bryant because he was on the show like, 15 times, something like that. So there's a lot of people are feeling that post um, moment. I don't know what's wrong. It's not, I mean, it's, it's, it's a shock to the system, but it's more than that. It's that sudden, like, abrupt, like, cut in time where you just go before and after. And this is the thing I want to speak about a little bit, is because we go through these things in our lives where sometimes something happens, maybe it's a car accident where you, your car gets wrecked, or maybe it's a job you get fired from and you get escorted from the building. That's happened once. Um, actually, I had both of those happen to me. Hmm. Um, and have experiences where things were so abrupt, the change from before to after, you have this almost, almost like hardwired delineation between what happened before, or what came before, and what happened afterwards. And for a lot of people, hearing the news about Kobe Bryant on Sunday was one of those moments where it was like before and after. And immediately afterwards, for a lot of people, was a lot of distress, upset, and sadness. When I heard about my friend who passed away, because on Saturday, and if you've been watching my replays, watching my broadcast Saturday I was at a memorial for a friend of mine um, or a friend of a group of us who were basically part of a, a bunch of volunteers that used to volunteer at the, radio, at the local radio station at KCRW um, for 15-20 years although we stopped three and a half four years ago when they stopped doing pledge drives but he was one of our crew and and so when he passed a couple of weeks prior it was shocked the system to me not as impactful because it wasn't such a big either icon or personal connection so it was one of those moments for a lot of people. In fact, hearing the people sharing on Saturday at that memorial, family members, friends, co-workers, etc., hearing from them, they were still in the moment of grief. And this is the thing, is that we have this, and I talked about this yet, um, Sunday about grief, is grief doesn't have a time frame. So if you're going through that experience with anybody in your life, and maybe it is for you, Kobe Bryant, because he was a, a major figurehead and icon as he was called in, in LA especially. So for a lot of people, that transformation, that shift, that, that breakthrough is absolutely something that we haven't um, got the other side of yet. And so my own experience, and I'm sharing this from the point of view of, of um, understanding, is that grief is part of the journey we go through when we lose something or someone. And this is the thing that I talked about again on Sunday. I'm going to recap a little bit now, but if you want to go back to the whole thing I talked about on Sunday in more detail, but I want to speak out some things to do after the grief is over. Because grief, well, mm -hmm. let me qualify that. <laughs> after the grief has subsided, I have experienced grief on many occasions in my life, and most of us have in different ways, although not many of us, not all, everybody recognizes what that is and how it works. Um, I went through that when my mother passed away in 2012, and also when my dog, dog passed away, which is my, own, my only head I'd ever had. Um, that was probably now, oof, 20, 15, a bunch of years ago. But recognizing how the memories and the emotional, I want to say flushing, almost like that feeling of emotions that come over us, that come out of the blue in no particular reason, no particular timing, 10, 20 years later, is a reminder that grief doesn't just go get done in two months. So one, two, two things two things I want to speak about today, one of which is that we have this distinct experience with grief that a mind wants to contain and control and limit. But grief doesn't work that way. The first of all is become aware that grief is a journey that doesn't have, an ex an ex doesn't have a destination. Yes, grief is a journey that doesn't have a destination. Grief is a journey where basically all you can do is, is experience the journey because it will go as long as it goes. It may be over in a week, now, for some people, grief is something where I know for experience with myself, with my mother, just to share some personal experience. I went to visit her when she first got sick um, early in 20, no, summer of 2012. It was actually right before the Olympics started in 2012 in England. And then went back for the funeral. 
I was much more grief stricken when I saw her sick than when she passed. So we have our own experience. I'm speaking that from the point of view that because I saw her basically knowing that she was going to be leaving, but that she was also in a place where she was um, so sick that I hadn't seen like that ever. And so it was such a traumatic experience for me. Um, I was very close to my mother that I was much more grief stricken in that moment than I was when we went back for the, the funeral in October, the following October. So it isn't always as there about the, the it, let me say it another way. Grief happens to us in different ways. I was trying to say that. And to allow it to do its thing is a healthy choice. To allow it to express itself in the way it needs to is healthy with the proviso that you don't milk it because it's, you know if you're doing this or not. If you're going through grief and you are hanging on to it, like you don't want to let go of it, that's milking it in a way because one, you're extending the pain and secondly, not willing to allow yourself to move on because there is a part of us, oftentimes, that's very attached to that person that left. So we don't want to give them up. We don't want to let them go. We don't want to let them slide out. So there's a constant um, opportunity to be in the moment with every experience. So for grief, one, one is about letting it go and let it have its own flow. Second is being in the moment for it. So wherever it happens, whatever's going on, you can be present to it. The second piece I want to talk about is what do you do afterwards? And that's kind of what the theme of today's talk was. So this is kind of like a PS from Sunday's broadcast. Now I want to get to the piece, which is what do you do afterwards, which is, I'm going to make this very simple. When you go through a grief or loss or sadness, my best recommendation is to find ways to love. Whether you're actually going to be loving yourself or being around friends or community, like with with our friend that passed away on Saturday, excuse me, when our friend that passed away two weeks ago, we had a memorial on Saturday, we vowed to stay connected because the thing is the last time any of us got together was when somebody else in the community dropped, uh, died. And so we don't want to keep making that the reason to get together. So we're intending now to actually already started a Facebook group of us to stay together because we haven't had one before. We're going to start creating, creating social gatherings to be together now rather than wait until somebody else passes away. So finding ways to love to connect after grief, especially when it's losing somebody, because you could have grief about a job that you lost, a car that got wrecked, a house that got destroyed, a weather situation, yes, weather situations count, um, a relationship that ended especially. The thing about it is when you're dancing in that arena of relationship and it ends abruptly, the grief process is not something you should deny or avoid or think there's something wrong with you because you're feeling grief. It's okay because loss and endings can cause grief. Especially the more, and, and grief, let me say it this way. I believe, and what I've learned, studied from different, different teachers and speakers, is that grief, the amount of grief is, is directly proportional to the amount of love that was expressed or shared or connected. So in the case of Kobe Bryant, who I didn't know personally, most people I didn't know personally, they may have, may have um, supported and shared him on and been very connected that way. But the grief they're feeling is for that loss inside of the person they knew inside, not for him personally directly. And this is the challenge with grief. Sometimes we start to paint somebody, paint somebody else with it. Oftentimes we don't remember that the grief has to do with us because grief is all about us. The grief we feel inside is, again, proportional to the amount of love we felt. Now, when it's directly with somebody we know, that's one thing. When it's somebody we don't know, but we feel that grief as a, um, almost a societal feeling, probably the main way of putting it. It's that feeling of being knocked out of, not, like knocked sideways, knocked off, knocked off base. Grief happens regardless of whichever way it is. So one of the things I recommend as a, sec, as a second, so I'm moving on from the grief to the first one. The second one is what you do afterwards. Okay, back in the second camp. Recommendation is to do things, take action that give more love to you in your life, which can be love that you express and share with friends and family. Stay connected with the community. Maybe that person who you lost was part of a community. You want to stay connected with them, which is what I'm doing with my friends. Or it's something you do to give back in a way to society. Maybe you serve, you contribute, you do something in the name of that person that passed away. These are all good ideas because they give you a chance to express that feeling which is tied to the loving in a way that's effective because it's really taking that love and transforming it into caring and into connection with those around you. Other things you can do is to, if you have somebody who passed away who was close to you, or something you lost, something that happened to you that was in your personal life, not so much a, an icon, a celebrity, then you can do things with the situation where you can look at any, any attachments you still have to it. Part of the, the paradigm we have when we have grief is because we feel like there's something incomplete. 
Like, if only they'd stayed around longer, we could have said this. Or if we'd only done something differently, this would be different. If only we'd done this instead of that, all these different things that come up for us. So the invitation is, after that ending has happened, is to do some emotional cleanup inside. To look at your own belief system, your own memories, your own experience, and look where you've got judgments hanging out they're still tied to that person or that situation that's no longer there. It doesn't serve you to stay connected, just to be clear. But taking time to focus on forgiving yourself, being willing to let go of those attachments, is a way to become healthy again. I think there's anything else. I think I'm going to leave it those two. Those two will be enough. So one is to, one of the, in the second bucket. <laughs> One of those is to connect with people and share more loving. And the second one is to make peace with anything you still have on it's un incomplete from the past relationship. I just, um, as I mentioned, this is like in a way the third talk, because I talked about it Saturday after the memorial service and then Sunday after hearing about Kobe Bryant. So this is like part three of the, the journey through grief series, not intentionally, but officially, but kind of in that theme. So understanding that after it's, after you, after the grief is, let me say that when the grief is simmered down, I'll put it that way, because grief doesn't end as I mentioned, when grief has come down to a low murmur, so to speak, then it's time to apply these two things. So one is spending time with loved ones, spending more time loving, expressing it, serving it, make a difference in honor of the other person, that's fine. But certainly for yourself to stay connected and feel in life and feel like you're living. And the second thing is to make peace with, resolve, heal, judgments attached to that past situation that's no longer there. So things you didn't say to that person that left, things you wish you said to that person that left, you may be feeling judgment about, oh, if only I had time to speak to them or complete something with them, all that stuff. It's still rattling around inside until you make peace with it. So do yourself a favor and make peace with those parts inside as well. If you want to get support, I definitely offer my services in this area because one of the things I'm passionate about helping people have more um, peace in their lives, more joy, more love in their lives. It's kind of what I'm about in my, in my work. If it's about a past relationship, I can definitely help you with that. Um, I'll leave some links in the comments for you to check out. One which is loving yourself, because I mentioned that earlier. Loving yourself is a key to being more um, healed and whole inside yourself. Is by simply loving yourself. Sounds simple, I know. But I created a meditation because it will help to do the practice every day for 30 days. That's why I created the self-love meditation. So I'll be in the comments. A link to chat with me will be in the comments as well. And um, I'll probably throw my BFF Masterclass in there too. Because if you're looking to transform your life, and have an amazing journey the next year, 10, 20 years, my BFF, BFF Masterclass will be there for you to help you with that. So those three link, I'll put those three links in the comments to give you something to think about. Um, and invite your comments and questions. If you have thoughts about this or questions about this topic, let me know in the comments below. Or send me a message over social media. It's important to realize that grief does happen. Again, not always just because of an ending of a person dying. It can be because of a relationship that ended or a job that ended, or a traumatic change in your life, or even a choice you made to change in life. Because you can feel grief about things you chose out of. Maybe you left home, and some grief about that you're carrying around with you. I know I went through some of that myself when I left home. So having this understanding that you can do something about it is vital, first of all, to complete that cycle, and to come to peace with it inside yourself, and to love more in the after effects of what happened. So I think that'll keep you busy. So again, there'll be three links in the comments for you to check out after I sign off. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week. The times may change, but it's every day of the week, seven days a week, right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can find me here every day. You can watch the replays on my business page on Facebook because that's a safer place to put them than my personal page because my personal page has so much other stuff on it. My business page is mostly just Facebook Live replays. So if you go to my business page, which is barryselby.org, you can like my page, and on there are maybe a couple of hundred broadcasts, not all of them because they don't show them all there for some reason. Thank you, Facebook. Um, however, I do have a backup plan, which is my YouTube channel. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine, where all of these live guaranteed. I made sure of it. So every broadcast from the newest to oldest are listed there. You can search through by titles, or if you know a particular number, you can look, play with your lucky number, whatever. Find talks to speak to you and get some help and get insight guidance from you there. That's about it. I thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or you want to talk about more about the group, if you have, let me back up a second. If you have some more questions about grief and letting go, I do invite you to watch my broadcast Saturday and Sunday, which was, this is 971, so that'd be 968, 969. 
watch those two in particular if you want to watch more about the grief journey. This is a PS to that. So I hope this has been of help to you. If you have any questions, comments, let me know below. And as always, as a reminder, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.